The Life and Sad Ending of Barbara McNair Barbara McNair was born Barbara Jean McNair on March 4, 1934, in Chicago, Illinois, to Horace McNair and Claudia McNair. McNair moved with her family, which also consisted of four siblings, to Racine, Wisconsin, shortly after her birth. With her parents' persuasion, McNair began singing in school productions and during church services. McNair attended Washington Park High School, graduating in 1952. After high school, McNair studied music at the American Conservatory of Music in Chicago. She also briefly attended UCLA because she had been raised to believe that whatever people planned to do with their lives they had to go to college to learn how to do it. She dropped college after one year when she felt it had nothing to do with what she wanted to accomplish. McNair's big break came with a win on Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scouts, which led to bookings at the Purple Onion and the Coconut Grove. Described by the New York Times as a gorgeous-looking woman with a warm, easy, communicative personality and a voice that can range from softly intense ballads to the edges of the gospel, Barbara soon became a popular headliner and a guest on such television variety shows as The Steve Allen Show, Hullabaloo, The Bell Telephone Hour, and The Hollywood Palace. Among her hit records while recording for the Coral, Signature, Motown, and Tech Recording Studios labels, were You're Gonna Love My Baby and Bobby. In the early 1960s, McNair made several musical shorts for Scopitone, a franchise of coin-operated machines that showed what were the forerunners of today's music videos. In 1967 McNair traveled with Bob Hope to Southeast Asia to perform for U.S. troops during the Vietnam War. McNair's acting career began on television, as a guest on series such as Dr. Colder, The Eleventh Hour, I Spy, Mission, Impossible, Hogan's Heroes, and Macmillan and Wife. McNair posed nude for Playboy in the October 1968 issue. She caught the attention of the movie going public with her much-publicized nude sequences in the gritty crime drama If He Hollers, Let Him Go, opposite Raymond Street Jacques, then donned a nun's habit alongside Mary Tyler Moore for Change of Habit, Elvis Presley's last feature film. She portrayed Sidney Poitier's wife in They Call Me Mr. Tibbs, and its sequel, The Organization, and George Jefferson's deranged ex-girlfriend Yvonne in The Jeffersons. McNair's Broadway credits include The Body Beautiful, No Strings, and a revival of The Pajama Game. McNair starred in her own 1969 television variety series The Barbara McNair Show, becoming one of the first black women to host her own musical variety show. The show, which was produced in Canada by CTV, lasted three seasons in first-run syndication in the United States until 1972. The show starred a list guests including Tony Bennett, Sonny and Cher, Little Richard, The Righteous Brothers, Johnny Mathis, Frida Payne, Mahalia Jackson, Della Reese, Lou Rawls, Rich Little, B.B. King, Ethel Waters, Debbie Reynolds, Lionel Hampton, and The Irish Rovers. McNair was a headliner at Las Vegas hotels like the Sahara. She also appeared on TV game shows in the 1960s, including You Don't Say, Hollywood Squares, and The Match Game. She was also a VIP guest on the talk shows of Johnny Carson, Joey Bishop, Mike Douglas, and Merv Griffin. McNair's recordings include Livin' End, The Real Barbara McNair, More Today Than Yesterday, Broadway Show Stoppers. A movie soundtrack If He Hollers, Let Him Go, I Enjoy Being a Girl, and The Ultimate Motown Collection, a two-CD set with 48 tracks that include her two albums for the label plus a non-album single and B-side and an entire LP that never was released. The saddest thing that happened to this girl was someone who had many difficulties and difficulties in a love affair, and her desire to be a mother was not accepted by heaven. McNair was married five times and had no children. McNair's first husband was Earl Wright whom she was married from 1953 until 1955. From 1963 until 1971, McNair was married to Jack Rafferty. 
In August 1972, she married Rick Manzi, whom she had met in 1965 during a separation period from Rafferty. McNair and Manzi remained married until his murder in December 1976. Three years after Manzi's death, McNair married Ben Strahan in 1979. McNair and Strahan divorced in 1986. Her last marriage was to Charles Bletska in 2006, to whom she was married at the time of her death. McNair is the cousin of musician Curtis Knight. In October 1972, McNair was arrested for possession of heroin at the Playboy Club in New Jersey. The charges stemmed from McNair signing for a package that was delivered to her home containing drugs. McNair stated she had no knowledge of the contents of the package or who sent it. McNair's then-husband Rick Manzi was later charged with the crime and charges against McNair were dropped in April 1973. On December 15, 1976, McNair's third husband, Chicago businessman Rick Manzi, was murdered in their Las Vegas mansion. Mafia boss turned FBI informant Jimmy Fradiano later claimed in his book The Last Mafioso that Manzi had been a mafia associate who tried to put a contract on the life of a mob associated tax attorney with whom he had a legal dispute. McNair filed for bankruptcy in September 1987, with debt totaling $458,399. Into her 70s, McNair resided in the Los Angeles area, playing tennis and skiing to keep in shape and touring on occasion. McNair died on February 4, 2007, after a seven year battle with throat cancer, in Los Angeles, California.